look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. And then we see what God was speaking. Here. To Eli. In relation to his own home. Second Samuel. I mean first Samuel chapter 2. I'm looking at verse 34. To 35. Hallelujah. Are we there together? And they shall be a sign unto thee. As I come upon thy two sons. On Hophini and Phineas. In one day. They shall die both of them. And I will raise me up. A faithful priest. Can I hear an amen to that? That shall do according to that. Which is in my heart. And in my mind. And I will do what? I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before my anointed for what? Forever. I'm going to raise up a faithful priest. Hallelujah. That shall do according to. That is the key thing I want you to know there. That shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And because he will do according to what is in my heart and in my mind, I will build him a sure house. Not just a house, but a sure house. Hallelujah. The word a sure house there, a man in the Hebrew, actually means to build up or support, to foster as a parent or a nurse. And I'm interested in that. In other words, by reason of the faithfulness of the priest that he was going to raise, who will do his will, his mind, his intent, he will become a father to him to father his children. Did you get that? Because it means to foster as a parent or a nurse. You can know, you can understand what nurses does, what, what they do, what they do, what nurses do in their place of work. Huh? How much care they take of the patient. Picture who a nurse should be to you, as only you were sick. Picture the kind of jobs nurses do at the hospital. God said, I will be a nurse to you. Because you are doing a According to my mind and my heart. Don't forget what we're talking about. Except the Lord builds the house. They that labor to be, they do what? They build but in vain. How many of you understand that God can literally speak to uh, the wife or the mother or the children if they go wrong that they might repent of the things they were doing? He said, I'm going to be a foster parent to you. By implication, merely looking at this, we see God coming down to become a father to your family. So, you now have a father who is fathering the fathers and the children. Hallelujah. It means to render firm or faithful. And it means to be permanent or quiet. I like that. A sure house. To be permanent or quiet. What is God saying? If he builds you a family, there's going to be peace. He makes sure there is peace. Look at what he said to Eli. I'm going to raise up a faithful priest who will do according to my mind and according to my heart. And I will build him what? A sure house. Praise the living God. I will be in a sure house simply means I will continue the priesthood in his family. By implication, what he's saying, hey, listen, I'm taking away Hophini and Phineas, though you have been my priest, but I'm going to raise another priest that will continue. In other words, I'm going to make sure that through that priest I'm going to raise, 
there will always be a seed who will be a priest unto me. And basically, he was talking about David. Hallelujah. Are you following me? He was talking about David. That is why there was a continuous someone to stand on the throne. In some of reason, why David has to be the one, as it were, that father or Jesus came through the genealogy of David. Because God made his promise to Eli. I'm going to read a Facebook priest. We will do according to my mind and according to my heart. And I will build him a sure house. By implication, I'm cutting off Ophine and Phineas, but the priest I'm going to raise, I will make sure his family continues because I've seen his heart and it's going to do according to my mind and according to my heart. Hallelujah. I would rather want more to throw this to the fathers of every family. When God raised a priest in the family, it's not the woman that he raised as a priest. Maybe you need to know this. That before the Levitical priesthood was put in place, every father in Israel was a priest to the family. Do you understand that? And that is the reason why Job was offering sacrifices. Because he was a father. Every priest, I mean every father was a priest before the law. Praise the living God. And that gives you an additional responsibility as a believer. That you all got a duty as a father in your home to function as a priest. And I say this so women, recognize the priesthood of your husband. It's very important. That is why sometimes though I joke with it, but it's very crucial. If you look at the life of Sarah, who is supposed to be your mother, whose daughters ye are, according to the scripture, Sarah never called the husband honey. Amen? Somebody is happy about that one. Hallelujah. Hey, am I talking to someone here? As at when Sarah was calling Abraham Lord, they have no Isaac. So, Papa Bomboy doesn't feature. Because there was no Bomboy for Sarah to refer to. You know, so many of us call our husband by our children's name. To me, it's not scriptural. You are not recognizing the lordship of the man. Now, I'm not placing women under bondage. But I'm talking of the standard home that God intends to build. And Abraham and Sarah are typical examples of the home that God built. Hallelujah. Let me explain this. When a man blesses a woman, her business goes faster. Somebody don't understand what I'm saying here. But these are principles and mysteries in God's word. Look at the way First Corinthians puts it. God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. Did the Bible say so? 